Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to show you how to create a drop-down list in Microsoft Excel using data validation. Now this might sound complicated, but even if you're a beginner to Microsoft Excel, this is still something you could add very quickly and easily to your spreadsheets to add a lot of functional, uh, functionality. Now what it allows you to do is quickly go down a list like this and pick, and you know you're not going to have to type things in and quickly uh, just kind of pre -pro program what you wanted to say in those boxes and I'll even show you how to make some adjustments to it if the list changes. So I'm going to show you two different ways today. If you're looking for other Microsoft Excel tutorials for beginners, take a look at my list down below in the description. I'll put the playlist link there and up above in the cards. But let's get started with how to create a drop down list in Microsoft Excel today. So I have some pretty simple lists uh, that I'm gonna be showing in this example today, just so you get an idea how to create these, but you can apply this to uh, any type of sheets. Now in this first example, what I want to have happen is, so I have a list of sports and when I use my drop down, I, all I wanna be able to select is it played indoor, outdoor, or both on it. So this might not be the most accurate one when I select uh, what the answer is, but you'll see the point how I make it. Now the first thing I need to do is select the area where the drop downs are going to be. So right here in this area, I'm going to go and highlight these here. And then all I need to do is go up to data. Make sure you have that selected. You can see where it is up top and find data validation. And it's right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And now I have this little window, the uh, data validation window pop up. And you can see right now the cells are set to any value. What that means is you can type any number, words, letters, gibberish, it doesn't matter. You can put anything you want. But we want to be able to force it to only select uh, select from the, do uh, the drop down list on it. So what I want to do is if I drop down, and then pick list right here. And you can see there's other options, but in this video, I'm just focusing on the list and the drop down. But let me know if you're looking at some of these other ones too, if you want a tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and pick list. And now I can give my options what I want. So I said, is it gonna be played indoor? And then I put a comma on it. And then I put outdoor. So depending on what your list is gonna be. And then I'm gonna just type both. So those, that's my small list on it, uh, just to give this example. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay now. So what happened was this little arrow uh, popped up here. So if I drop down, you can see indoor, outdoor, or both. So if I go ahead and pick football, both. Um, we'll go to golf, and if I'm just thinking about gameplay, we'll just go to outdoor. Again, I can pick different examples depending on on this, but you can go through and pick these and uh, just kind of quickly go through and you know you're not going to make any spelling errors because you've already uh, told it what it wants to be. Now this is a simple way to create a drop down list and the next way, it's the way I prefer, so keep on wa uh, watching on that one and I'll show you how to kind of make a, a list on the side that you can type in and increase it uh, based on a certain range on your uh, spreadsheet. So I'm on sheet two now, and in this case, I wanna create a drop down list. When I come over here, I drop down, and I want to be able to pull from the information that I typed over here, but I also wanna be able to show you how, if that list changes or grows, how you can quickly add it. So the first thing I wanna do in this case, and a lot of people kind of over, uh, uh, kind of don't do it this way, but I think it's better. Uh, I'm gonna create a table over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and just go up to insert table and click on that. And I do have a heading on there. So I'm gonna say my table has the heading. and I'm just gonna hit okay, just like that. So I've created a table from there and I'll explain why I'm doing it. I'll show you uh, a different way that you can do it, but I just find it adds a little bit of work if you're changing around the table. Now, this is very similar to what we did before. I need to select the area that I want the data validation in. So I need to go highlight this area and then go up to the data up top, find my data, data validation. Now, this time I still need to change it to list like I did before, but I need to change the source on it. So when I go ahead and click this little arrow here, I can highlight 
the source. So I, I wanted it to be limited, full, exempt, and then I can go ahead and pick this, and now I can go ahead and hit OK. So if I was going to go to practice status and you can see limited, full, exempt, it's pulling from the list beside it. So I can go through from this. Now let's say if something changes, if I want to add uh, something to this list, if I go in and I'll just give an example here and maybe the person's out. So I'm just going to go and type out and right away if I go over here, notice it's out on it. Now if I didn't create that uh, table at first, that wouldn't automatically happen. There'd be a different way. So if I just go back a bit here and I'm just going to go back and take off the table. So the table's off. I, uh, you can see that it doesn't have the drop down. It's just back to um, normal information in the, on the sheet. Now I could go back here and I'm going to go uh, this time. I'll just go back to my data, data validation again and I'm going to pick this uh, right through here, hit enter and hit OK. So now if uh, same thing, it seems to be working. But now if I type this like this this time and I go through, notice out isn't there. What I'd have to do is the way I would want to put out in there, I'd actually have to put it in between uh, what's there. So I could uh, add, if I added a, I'm just going to insert a row here and I'm just going to uh, cut this and paste this uh, over here. So now if I go back over here, you can see out is there and um, in the way I had it set up here I put a, a spot in here so I'd have to move everything out so I just find that just adds a little bit of extra work if you create that table at first it was just easy to add and keep going on there now maybe uh, if you were sharing this sheet out you wouldn't want people to see this part here you can go ahead and hide this spot so you can right click up here you can see the hide option um, and maybe so then they would just see this here as they go through but as I said I would recommend just create that table first in the first part that I showed you. You can also create uh, it in different places. So if I wanted to have the information in a new sheet, so if I just go back here and uh, put this back here, I could create this information. I could take it and so it wasn't even on this sheet. So I could just go down below. Maybe I just paste it here. But the one thing you'd have to do, if this is where your information is coming from, you would have to update. If I go back in my validation, you would have to make sure that you uh, go back here and update your source. So if I, anytime you move this, if this is going to be my source now, now I'd have to update it here. And you can see it's on a different sheet, especially if you've moved it. If you started from the first place, it doesn't matter. But you can put it in different places to maybe hide the list that you, if you were sharing it to and if you didn't want people to see. So like I said, I would recommend doing the table first uh, on it and then it just makes it easy to add to it. I hope you're able to use this information right away and add it to your Microsoft Excel experience. Let me know what other things that you're interested in learning. Just write them down below in the uh, comments and then I like to keep track of those and it gives me a lot of ideas and it helps me out to know what people are looking for. But anyways, thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.